Hey everybody, so in today's video I'm going to show you how we can update the state of objects. Be sure that you're importing the useState hook from React. So we'll begin by creating a constant, use array destructuring, our object will be a state variable of car, then we need a setter variable for this car, set car equals the use state hook. You can set the initial state with useState, so what we're going to do in this lesson is create a JavaScript object. We're going to create your favorite car with three properties, a year, a make, who manufactured the car, and a model. So pick a car that you like. I like a 2024 Ford Mustang. If you would like, although not necessary, you can put each of these properties on a new line for readability. Personally, I find that easier to read. So car is going to be an object with these three properties. But later on, we're going to update these properties with a few text boxes. Within our return statement, we will create a development to wrap everything. I will create a paragraph with some text. Your favorite car is, so we have that text currently, we'll add our car's year followed by the car's make, then the car's model. So for me, my paragraph states, your favorite car is a 2024 Ford Mustang. After our paragraph element, we're going to create three input elements, one for year, make, and model. So let's do that. I will create an input element the type of this input element will be number for the year. So we should have some arrows on this input element to increment or decrement. I will set the initial value to equal the year of our car, car.year. I'll add a break afterwards. Let's copy this input element, paste it twice. The second input element is going to have a type of text for a string. The initial value will be the make of our car, in my case, Ford. The third input element will have type text. The value will be model. I have a 2024 Ford Mustang. When I interact with these input elements, I would like to change the property of my object. We'll need to use the onChangeEvent handler. The onChange event handler is going to accept a callback to some functions. Function handle year change. There will be one parameter, an event. The event object is going to be provided to us through the onChange event handler when we add that in in a moment. Let's copy this function. We'll fill it in later. Then we will have a function to handle make change. Then handle model change. We have our three functions to change the year, the make, and the model properties of our object. With our input elements, we will set the on change event handler equal to a callback, a callback to handle year change. So let's set the on change event handler to the other two input elements. On change, handle make change, on change, handle model change. The last thing we got to do is finish filling in our functions. We'll begin with handle year change. If I want to change the state of my car object, I will use the setter function that's provided to us with use state. Set car, set a parentheses. We will be using an updater function, but there's something I want to explain first. We're going to set our car to be a JavaScript object. If I were to take the year, and set it equal to 2025. This is what happens if I interact with this input element. Let's say I decrease this input element. Well, the value changes to 2025. That worked, but the make and the model of our car disappeared. These properties no longer exist. What we've ended up doing is replacing the initial object that has these three properties with a new object that has this one property of year. We need some way to retain the make and model of our car, the previous properties that we're not updating. That's why we're going to precede this property to be changed with the spread operator of our car. When we update the state of our car, 
we're going to be creating a new object, spread all of the current properties of our car, and add a year. After using the spread operator, it's going to look like this. We'll have a year, make, model, and year again. If you have an object with two properties with the same name, you'll end up using the later one and disregarding the first. JavaScript doesn't allow for duplicate keys. That's why we're going to be using the spread operator on our car object, then updating the year. That should allow us to retain the previous properties. If I were to interact with the year, we'll retain the previous properties. They won't change. Currently, this setter is only set to change the year to 2025. We're going to access the event object provided to us from the onChange event handler behind the scenes. I will change the year to be access our event object, access its target, access its value. When I interact with this input element, the year property is going to change accordingly. But a better practice with useState would be to use an updater function, which we learned about in the last video. We don't want to modify the current state of car, but rather make a reference to the previous state. This allows for safe updates. We're going to turn this object to be part of an arrow function. So let's create our arrow function. We will take our car arrow do this. So with an arrow function, if you have a set of curly braces after the arrow function, JavaScript thinks you're trying to write a multi-line statement, but that's not the case. We're trying to create a JavaScript object. What you could do is surround your set of curly braces with a set of parentheses. That will allow you to create an object within an arrow function. Since we're working with the previous state of car and not the current state, we would want to name this to something else. One common naming convention is to take the first letter of the state variable and use that to indicate that this is the previous state. So C will be our parameter. We will use the spread operator on the previous state of car represented as C. And that should work. This allows for safe updates, especially if you're updating the state of your car more than one time within a function. See my video on updater functions if you'd like to learn more about that. All right, then we have to handle make change. We will use our setter, set car. We're going to be replacing the initial object with a new object. We will use the spread operator on our car, access the make, set it equal to, access our event parameter that's provided to us, access its target, access its value. We'll upgrade the statement so that it's an updater function. Let's take our car, arrow, do this. Then we will rename car as C to indicate that we're working with the previous state of car, not the current state. I can change my year and I can change the make. And that should update. We have one last function to work with, handle model change. Again, set car. We're creating a JavaScript object. Use the spread operator on our car to spread the properties so we don't lose them. Update the model with our access our event, access its target, access its value. Then we'll change this to be an updater function. We have parameter of car, arrow, do this. Since we're creating a JavaScript object within an arrow function, we need to surround it with a set of parentheses. And then rename car as C to indicate we're working with the previous state. And that should work. I will change the year, the make, and the model. All right, everybody. So that is how we can update the state of an object using React.